Good evening, good evening, good evening. I hope you all are having an amazing day. And thank you for those that are logging in and joining me. Make sure you say hey so I can say hey back to you as you're logging in. Um, obviously, you probably read the headline and you know that I'm going to talk a little bit about a year-long commitment that I made to myself. But more importantly, I'm not just going to talk about this commitment I made to myself. I'm going to talk about why it's important for you guys to understand this and how you can adopt this and incorporate this into your own life as well. So one thing that I am extremely passionate about, well, let me back that up and do my intro and then come back to that. So for those that are new to me, hey, I'm Dr. Nicolia. Um, I do all the things and wear all the hats, but the difference between me and my old self is I don't do all the things and wear all the hats with the exhaustion, with the overwhelm, with the frustration. I do it from a place of grace, from a place of harmony, and from a place of balance, and that's what I teach women to be able to create as well. Thank you so much for the love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So one thing that I'm extremely passionate about, especially in this season with everything going on the way that it is, is being able to create a healthy form of balance in your life. Let's be honest. As women, our attention is being pulled in a million different directions. We're moms, we're spouses, we're employers, employees. We um, Maybe we're employers, we have a business. We're all the things, we're expected to do all the things and be all the things. But a lot of times we get exhausted. Like, let's be honest, we're only human. And that's one thing I have to tell my daughter. Like I the other day was walking in with all these groceries in my hand. And as I'm walking in, she walks in ahead of me, she takes her shoes off. And she's like, can you get me down a cup? Because she can't reach where our cups are. Can you get me down a cup? And I had to tell her. I'm only one person. I have groceries in my hand. I'll be able to get that in a moment. Um, and I think that we as women need to remind ourselves of that same concept again and again. And again, because we are only one person, but we're expecting ourselves to be able to do all of the things easily and with grace. And it doesn't always work that way. So anyways, um, I'm going to rewind a couple years and just share a very um, important part of my life that led me to this point in my journey. So a few years ago, um, three years to be exact, I went through a pretty contentious divorce. So at this time, um, I was exhausting a lot of my emotional energy as well as my finances into a divorce process. Um, needless to say, it was very emotionally draining, um, very difficult for me at the time to be very honest. And um, at that point, I got really consumed in anxiety. I got really consumed in depression. I got consumed in just, the, oh, well, it's me, the victim mentality, right? And um, I stayed there for a little bit, but I'm one of those people that's like, okay, is how I'm feeling, is what I'm doing, is what I'm participating in, in like leading me on the right path to the future that I desire? And if not, then what do I need to do different to put myself in a position to make some changes and some shifts? So at that point, I started to really check in with myself. I started to really reflect on where I was at, what I needed to do, the shifts that I desired to make, the shifts that I wanted to make, all those things. Um, and I decided like, okay, I couldn't play victim anymore. I really needed to step into my power because my past might not have went the way I wanted, but I really needed to work really intentional about creating a future that I desired. Anyways, I moved forward. I decided that this was the strategy I wanted to create. So I started to really dig deep. Like, what were some of the goals that I wanted to reach? What were some of the strategies and things that I, what were some of the things that I felt like I gave up in that that marriage that I needed to go after as a new, you know, single, as somebody that really uncovering who I was? And so um, at that time, I decided that I wanted to go back to school and get my doctorate. So needless to say, here I was going through a very financially draining divorce. I was working a full-time job and a part-time job. I was raising two young children and I decided to get my doctorate. Now, everybody and their mama thought I was crazy. And to be honest, I kind of thought I was a little bit too. But if you know anything about me, I'm... I'm one of those people that that likes to learn. Um, learning is my 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 safe space. Learning is like a place where I just feel like myself. So I decided to commit to this. Um, while I thought it was a good idea initially, there came a point in that season where I was ready to just throw in the towel with everything. I was ready to throw in the towel with the degree. I was ready to throw in the towel with um, the part-time job. I was ready to throw in the towel with everything, pretty much everything except for my kids, right? Um, but I was exhausted. Now, I'm going to be honest. There was a point in my life where with that season I was very regretful very resentful re very frustrated with that season I I resented like how did I get in this situation why do I not have any time why does it seem like everyone's living their best life and I'm struggling 
But there was so much that I learned in that season from that experience and what I went through that I was like, oh my gosh, like I really learned how to one, prioritize something I was really passionate about because everyone told me it was selfish of me to go back to school when raising young children that really needed my undivided attention. But for me, I'm like going back to school is something that's going to help facilitate growth amongst our family, right? So I learned how to really prioritize myself. I learned how to create balance because here I was juggling and balancing all of these things. And I still managed to to do really well with this. I managed to like prioritize my success, to prioritize my growth, to prioritize um, prioritize balance, right? No longer was I, so I came to a point in my life, fast forward a little bit later, I came to a point in my life where I was like, okay, I'm not gonna make burnout normal. I am going to figure out a way to do the things that I wanna do, but make balance my priority, make balance something that I'm seeking. And so, so slowly but surely, I started to incorporate these small strategies into my life to make balance feasible. Meaning, for example, I would um, clean a little bit each day instead of waiting for one day to get overwhelmed with all these cleaning. I would make sure that I was practicing self-care so I didn't wait until I was burned out to try to find out ways to take care of myself. So I started implementing these small things that helped me to really show up at my high estate. So that's what's gotten me to this point, right? This is what's gotten me to the point of really working with women that have big dreams, big visions, big desires, big hopes, big aspirations, all the things for their life, but sometimes feel like life gets in the way. Those distractions, those roadblocks, those obstacles, those limiting beliefs, like all those things. And so um, that's what's gotten me here. But on that journey, there was also a part of my journey that was really impactful that I want to share with you guys today because I think it's so powerful. And I don't think, it sounds really simple when I share it, but not enough people talk about it and definitely not enough people commit to it. So I always tell my clients, I always tell my daughters, and I always remind myself of this. We have to be our own greatest cheerleader. If you're not going to bet on you, how can you expect anyone else to bet or believe on you as well? So I committed a year long, I committed to a year long practice where I had no choice but to believe in myself. Now, I'm going to be really honest with you guys. I am a very, very, very big op uh, pessimist, okay? So I always saw myself as a person that was like real, like, well, I'm not going to think, you know, good about this situation because, um, no, oh, my phone's going to die. We're still going to make this work. Um, I'm like one of those people that's like, well, I'm just thinking real about it. I'm not going to get myself all hyped up and excited about it if this isn't going to go my way. I'm not going to do this if um, things aren't going to turn out well. I'm not going to let myself believe this and feel let down. But really what it was is I was a pessimist. I was that person that saw the glass as half empty all the time. So I made a commitment for a year straight to be optimistic and not optimistic about everything because I recognize you can't make a shift overnight with everything that you were working in a certain way for. So I made a shift to be optimistic about me, to be optimistic about my visions and about my dreams. So at this time, I decided that I really wanted to birth a, a business. I wanted to expand. Um, I had already written a book. I already had some people coming to me and asking me questions about my book and consulting with me about how to write a book. But I really wanted to grow like the life coaching realm around it. Like, how do I help women heal their hurt? How do I help women show up as who they know they're called to be in their life? Like, how do I become that person? And so I wanted to birth this extra part of my my brand so I decided to really commit to me and I'm gonna tell you guys this was really difficult because the moment you decide that you're gonna commit to you there's gonna be all of these things that come to conspire against you to remind you why you shouldn't be believing this to remind you why you should just do what's easy to my, remind you what you should why you should always do what's just in your comfort zone but we know that there's an absolutely no growth in our comfort zone so I had to choose to commit to believing in my growth to believing in stepping outside of my comfort zone, to believing in doing things that were not convenient. Yes, I chose optimism. I chose to do something totally opposite of what I had committed to doing, which was extremely overwhelming and extremely challenging. But throughout this journey, I really learned to believe in myself like I had never done before. You know, I was one of those people that'd be like, oh yeah, I can, I can lose weight. And but still in the back of my mind, still question, is that possible? Or, oh, yeah, 
I can earn a certain amount of money, but still like talk myself out of it because the reality is we have limiting beliefs. We are creatures of habit and our habits are typically negative thoughts, repetitive negative thoughts that really impact our success. And so for me, I had to choose to do something different. I had to choose to remove those limiting beliefs. I had to choose to remove those limiting thoughts and replace them with thoughts that were going to serve me and not choose to do that one time, but choose to show up and do it every single day. And let me say that this year long commitment was totally life changing. It blew my freaking mind because some days it was so easy and I'm like, yes, I'm on track. I can see why I'm doing this. I can see where there's growth. I can see where there's success. And then some days I was hit with an obstacle with what felt like out of nowhere that I was ready to throw on the towel, but I had to remind myself that I was committed to this outcome. And what came from this and what came from the long run is that I kept showing up even when it's difficult. And this is the biggest mistake that I think we as people make in general is that we set goals. And when we get close to the finish line, we don't see the finish line. It starts to get foggy and blurry. And we're questioning if we should even be doing this and we give up. And we're two centimeters from the finish line, but we didn't even know that we were two centimeters from the finish lines because we were so ready to throw in the towel before we even approached the finish line, right? And so we have to stop being so quick to throw in the towel. I know I'm I'm guilty of it, right? I'm a believer. And the one thing that I would always do, this is my example, this is my actual proof of, you know, throwing in the towel at the finish line. As a believer, I would always say, God, give me a sign that I'm moving in the right step. And what I would do is I would think that I was looking for signs that I was doing the right thing. But what I really did is I looked for signs that validated excuses to give up. So I'm going to say that one more time. Instead of looking for signs to validate me moving forward, I looked for signs that validated excuses for me to throw in the towel, for me to give up, for me to call it quits. And so I would start and stop, start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. And it didn't get me anywhere. But through that season of really learning how to create more balance in my life and remove the burnout and through the season of being able to say, you know what, I'm a priority. My goals, my desires, my dreams are not in vain. They matter. They're important. They're, they're here for a reason. And through the season of committing to fully believing in myself confidently without wavering really opened up so many opportunities for me. I started to take leaps that I had never taken before. I started to take steps that I had never felt confident before in doing. And it was so amazing. Yes, the hamster wheel of misery. I chose to get off that hamster wheel because I was moving quick, but going nowhere fast. So uh, before I end this, um, because my battery is gonna die, I wanna share a really, 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 really powerful story, okay? Super simple, but so like profound, okay? So there's a man and he's cooking a frog. He's even going to eat the frog for dinner. I don't know if you ever had frog legs. Side note, they're freaking amazing. <laughs> but anyways, he's cooking this frog for dinner. And as the pot, the temperature in the pot is beginning to heat up, the frog is adjusting its internal temperature to the temperature in the pot. It's getting hotter and hotter. And eventually it gets to a point where it's scorching hot. And the frog's like, okay, I'm about to get out of here. I'm going to jump. I'm just take the jump. Take a leap, right? And the frog goes to jump. But well, when the frog goes to jump, he can no longer jump because he used all of his strength to adjust his internal temperature that he has no strength to take the jump that he needs to take. So eventually the frog dies, the man eats the frog for dinner. Now, if I were to ask you, what would you say killed the frog? For most of us, we would say what killed the frog was the man that put it in the pot and cooked it, which at a very core level, yes, that's what's killed the frog. But in reality, what actually killed the frog was the frog's own inability to recognize when it was time to jump. Here's the thing, guys. We do that same thing when it comes to our goals. We have big visions. We have big dreams. But we start to make excuses. We're like, oh my gosh, I have so many things buying for my time and attention. I'm just throwing my, my goal on the back burner. And I'll get to it someday. I'll get to it when it's convenient. I'll get to it when I have all the time. I'll get to it when I have all the money. And all the things. We make all the excuses Instead of recognizing when there's a clear cut sign that it's time to take the leap, a clear cut sign that it's time to jump. And so what I'm going to challenge you to do is I'm going to challenge you to check in with yourself and ask yourself, are you that frog that's adjusting your temperature to the external temperature in the pot? And really just familiarizing yourself with the comfort zone, really just making that comfort zone even more familiar, even more comfortable and even more safe. Or are you the frog that's ready to take the leap, ready to take the leap and jump in to your growth zone? It's time to take the leap. You are exactly right, Tabitha. It is time to take the leap. 
So one thing that I am doing as I'm moving into the new year is supporting people with ending this year strong and starting next year even stronger by getting rid of burnout and incorporating balance and harmony into your life so that you can show up for your goals, so that you can show up for your life as who you know you're called to show up for. Like I called, called to show up as, right? Who you know you're called to show up as. Here's the thing, your dreams, your visions, your desires, all those things, they're not there by accident. If you have a desire, it's something that can be brought to fruition, but you first have to believe in yourself. Not believe in yourself when it's convenient, not believe in yourself when it's fun, not believe in yourself when it's easy, not believe when in yourself just because someone told you you need to and you believe in yourself on Mondays and Tuesdays, but not on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday or whatever, but to believe in yourself every single day with an unwavering level of faith. Remember guys, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Trusting that each path, each step you take, the next step will be illuminated, letting you know the next step. So even if you don't see the big dream, or even if you don't see the big picture, even if you don't see how it can happen, you got to take that leap knowing that it's available for you, that that success you desire is there. You are deserving of it and it can come to fruition if you first take that leap. So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually put my Calendly link in the comments, okay? The Calendly link is going to let you access me. You get a free 15 minute strategy call with me to let me know where you feel stuck, where you feel trapped, where you'd like to create more balance in your life and how I can incorporate the strategies, the systems, and the supports that I have used, not only in my life, thank you so much for the love, but in my clients' lives as well to help them create the balance that they desire and deserve because that is not unique to me. It's not unique to them. It's available for you as well. So let me go ahead and put that down below so that you can access this. If you know someone who can be blessed by this, uh oh, it's not letting me put it in there. So let me type it. Excuse me for you guys seeing my forehead. Um, if you know someone who can be blessed by this, you know someone who really would like to create more balance into their life so that they can show up for themselves, for those that they love. They can balance all the <laughs> wearing all the hats and do it with grace, do it in a set place of like harmony. Share this video so they too can be blessed by some of this information and more importantly that they can also connect with me so that I can support them with really creating a life that they desire and deserve. So I hope that you all have an absolute amazing evening thank you for those who joined me thank you for all those that are watching the replay hashtag replay in the comments I'd love to know who's watching the replay and I hope that you all have an amazing day and until next time I will chat with you guys later bye